Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch on a 2018 Fiat 124 Spider. This hitch is an inch and a quarter, so you're going to need to make sure that you pick accessories that are inch and a quarter, otherwise they're not going to work. Speaking of, this is pretty recessed in here, and I think partially because the Fiat has a slightly shorter bumper. It's gonna stick out more. This one's pretty recessed, so when you pick any accessories, whether it be a cargo carrier or a bike rack, you're really gonna to wanna to make sure that it has some extension. And the best way to do that is to actually measure from our hitch pin hole out to the furthest point on the rear fascia. So from the center of our hitch pin hole to the furthest point on our fascia, we're looking at about seven and a half inches. And that's important for those bike racks that fold up or just measuring your cargo carrier to make sure that it extends past this rear fascia and that way it's not gonna scratch it. Now, another important thing that we need to measure is gonna be our ground clearance. So measuring from the top of this receiver tube opening to the ground, you're at 10 inches, which is pretty low. Um, the main thing you're gonna wanna be concerned with is not the hitch hitting, but your accessories that hang out, especially if you're going up an incline, that's gonna cause that to kind of dip down and can make contact with the ground. So I would maybe suggest trying to find something that has an upward shank that's gonna raise it up a little bit. So you're really opening up your options as to what this car can be used for. Not just a two-seater sports car, but you can actually go enjoy your activities at the same time. So it does have safety chain loops in case you were to pull a small trailer and it will fit clevis style as well as your standard hook here. Um, now to go on that, I will suggest uh, that if you are doing a trailer, it's gonna be a small one obviously as the weight capacities on this hitch are rated at 2000 gross trailer weight, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. And then you also have a 200 pound tongue weight, and that's the downward pressure that goes on that receiver tube opening. So when you think of that, it'd be your bike rack or your accessories loaded up. You don't wanna exceed that. Now, you might wanna check your owner's manual to see what the vehicle's actually capable if you are planning on towing it all, and make sure that you're not exceeding that, because just because the hitch can, doesn't mean that the vehicle can. So take the lower of those two numbers and stick with that. Now, something else to note, this is a half inch hitch pin. A lot of times when you pick up accessories, whether it be your bike rack or cargo care, they'll come with it. Uh, if you want a different option or a locking option, we actually have those available here at eTrailer. So as far as the installation of the hitch, it's pretty straightforward. It's essentially just four bolts that we're kind of fishing through. You're gonna have to enlarge some holes, but it's really not too bad to do. Uh, you are gonna have to jack the car up more than likely to get that in place and lower the exhaust down. So get your jack stands ready or your jack um, and do it properly. Uh, something else too, this is obviously based on the Miata chassis and the instructions are for the Miata. So there is a bumper support that we modified. It's kind of up to you on that one. But either way, I'm gonna walk you through all the steps right now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be lowering down our muffler and that's gonna gain us access to the holes that are actually going to be bolted up to the hitch. Now I'm gonna point out, we have an exhaust hanger, actually two of them on each side of the muffler. And then looking a little bit forward, you also have this one up here. So we're gonna need to remove those. And before doing that, I'm actually gonna run a strap across just to kind of support the muffler as we kind of lower it down because you don't want it just supported by this long distance, it can actually damage it. So if you're doing this at home um, and you're just raising your car up just a little to gain clearance, you can actually just put a block or something underneath it and that should work all the same. So to get these exhaust isolator hangers off of here, I suggest using a little bit of soap water or even a penetrating oil. That's gonna help slide these off. And I'm gonna grab my uh, pry bar and we'll get this off. And there are some times you'll have to kind of work at it for a little, but you should be able to get this to move. And then as we get isolators off, we'll be able to actually move the muffler side to side. Now with these two off, you can see it's already dropping. I have my strap in place because we're on a lift. So go ahead and get the two isolators on the other side off. With our muffler lowered down, we're gonna see there is a plastic support beam here as it kind of runs up. And this is where we're actually gonna need to bolt our hitch in. So there's gonna, it looks like there's gonna be three 10 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off and there's gonna be another one identical to it on the other side. So go ahead and do that for both. Once you get your three 10 millimeters off, 
This will come out, and now I'm gonna go take the other one off. So now we're going to need to enlarge some of these holes, and the reason being is our carriage bolt goes on a spacer block inside of the frame rail. In order to feed this into those holes, we actually have to feed it through here. And so our mounting holes, you're gonna see, one of them is pretty much right where the front hanger is, and the other one is maybe a couple inches back. And we're gonna be enlarging this back one. Now, you're gonna need to wanna have this handy. That way you can kinda test fit if you can fit those in. Um, and then you wanna do as least amount of drilling out as possible, because we are gonna have that bolt stud come down and really the less amount of slop, the better. It's not a big deal if it gets a little too large, but uh, we'll go ahead and get this to where this will fit. Now, as far as using tools to do this, if you have a rotary tool uh, with a grinding bit, that'll work well. Uh, you could probably get away with using a, a drill bit if you're careful and just kind of wallering it out. I'm gonna use a burr bit on a drill and just kind of work this out until I can get these fit. So my carriage bolt head is actually a little bit wider than the uh, spacer plate here. And so it may look like a relatively small hole here, but if you kind of go in at an angle, I can set that and it'll raise in place. And that's kind of what we're looking for. But before putting in place, we're gonna be using a fish wire technique. And so what that's gonna do is allow us to pull this through and into place. So starting at this back hole here, or the forward hole, I guess you'd call it, you can put a little bend on this if you want. Take the coiled end and feed this back until you get to the opening that we just enlarged. And you can reach up here, just be careful if it's sharp. And once you get a hold of that, you can go ahead and pull that through the hole. Now don't pull it completely. In fact, you're gonna want to make sure that you still have this end not going all the way through. So sometimes I actually put a bend in it just to kind of create a little bit of a stop and it doesn't pull through on us. So with the coiled end, it's gonna be pretty easy. We'll take our spacer block, go ahead and you can just feed that up in there now. And then on this section here, we're simply just going to thread our bolt onto here. Now again, it is kind of tricky to feed these in if your hole isn't super large, as I've kept mine kind of small on purpose. So I may feed it like this, just to kind of make sure that it gets in there. There we are. And then from there, push it up. I'm just gonna pull this wire down. It may jostle it around a little bit, but you should be able to get that bolt fed through the spacer block and out like that. Now leave this wire attached as it's gonna make it a lot easier when we actually put the hitch in place. So with that one in, go ahead, repeat the same process on the other side. So now that we have the forward studs put through, the rear is gonna be pretty much the same technique, but pretty easy because we'll just feed that carriage bolt up through the same hole, slide the spacer block in, and then just pull straight down. So we'll just feed that in. Run the spacer block. and then it goes through. So go ahead, do that on the other side, and then we'll be ready to put our hitch in place. Now, those fish wires, we're gonna actually feed them through the corresponding holes where they're at, and I suggest having your flare nuts ready. That way, we can actually pull those down and get one attached just to hold it in place. But to get this in place, it does look like we're gonna have to feed it a little bit over the exhaust. Just kind of work our way in here. And then feed your fish wires through those holes. Now be careful, these ends are pretty pokey. So safety glasses or just being very careful, you can tape the ends if you really want to. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull my fish, fish wire off. Now be careful because if you push that stud in the chassis, you're gonna have a bad time. So just take your flared nut here and just hand tighten. Now sometimes it helps to kind of just push it against the side and let some of those threads actually stick onto the uh, hitch itself. It'll kind of hold it in place. Or if you can get two fingers on it, that's honestly the best way to do it. And once you get one kind of just hand threaded on there, I should secure it in place. 
And then you can go to the other side, do the same method until you get our, all four of these nuts actually on there. So now at this point, we have our nuts actually hand tightened up. You're gonna want to use this time to center the hitch up as much as possible. As you can see, there's a little bit of play. It's not a ton, but getting it nice and centered up before we tighten it down is gonna be key. And then once you're happy with that orientation, we're gonna go back with a torque wrench and a, we have a 18 millimeter socket and we're gonna to torque these down to the specifications in the instruction manual. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, you can generally rent them at an auto parts store or we actually have a variety of uh, torque wrenches here at E-Trailer, but this is an important step to make sure that the, they're not gonna get loose over time, but there's also not gonna to be too much stress on the threads. So let's go back to our four nuts here and we will get these torqued down properly. Now the next step, we're gonna get our exhaust hangers back in place. So go ahead and make sure you get all five of them, including that forward one. So now with your exhaust back in place, you're ready to actually get your car off the jack stands, make sure you have your blocks and all your straps out and you're ready to use your hitch. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch on a 2018 Fiat 124 Spider.